today. We're certainly mighty grateful to you. My name is Alderson, Charles Alderson. And this is my wife, Karen. How are you? Maria. What was your name? Wendy Gibson. Big wind, the engines call me. I guess it's because I've been known to blow up right stiff now and again. Well, then it's a case of a big wind blowing us a lot of good luck. Shucks, mister. In this country, shooing off engines huh, comes under the head in the small chores. Besides, they wouldn't hurt you. It's just after your horses. <laughs> nice ones, too. I might say, madam, you, you drive them right smart. Thank you. You folks sure enough ain't real hardbooters from back east, are you? Maryland. Oh, yeah. Well, come from Vermont myself. I guess maybe it don't show on me, but I started out to be a lawyer. A lawyer? Well, I guess looks are kind of deceiving. You look honest. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I sort of got to practicing for the wrong kind of bars, so to speak. Oi, get back up on that hill there and look after them steers. Well, folks, shall we get going? Get going? Yeah. Well, where to? Huh? Well, my place, of course. Somebody's got to welcome me to Wyoming, ain't they? You remember, honey? They said we couldn't make it. But here we are. There she is, folks. Finest ranch house within a hundred miles. Oh, it looks cozy. How far is the nearest ranch? hundred miles. <laughs> I don't suppose it'd be much of a job to raise cattle around here, would it? Easy's picking fleas off a hummingbird with wool mittens on. All you gotta worry about is floods, droughts, and blizzards. Nothing to it. Well, besides that, what does a man have to have to get started in the cow business? Just rope to cut out your mavericks from the stray herds you accidentally find back in the hills. Mavericks? Yeah, mavericks. Them's ain't got nobody's brand on them. That's how I got mine. Everybody else got theirs. Welcome, folks, to the Gibson Ranch. Now then, you folks just make yourself to home, and I'll go rustle us up some grub. Why not make yourself at home while Maria and I get for dinner? And instead of rustling, maybe it will taste better if we will cook it. <laughs> See, that's all right. You folks are welcome to stay on here just as long as you like. Well, it's mighty nice of you to make the offer, but we don't want to impose on you. You see, there's going to be another one of us. No. Well, I reckon we can handle three, we can handle four. Besides, you wouldn't be able to put up no kind of place for the first snow. She's a beautiful baby. Now I have two little girls to take care of. No. Only one. Don't say things like that, Lipkin. Maria, you'll watch over her always. As you have me. Promise me. I promise. Where's the doctor? I didn't get him. My horse fell in through me. The Indians picked me up. How is Karen? You better hurry. Charles. Charles, where are you? He's not here. There was a storm. He's coming. He'll be here any moment. Charles.
house, Karen. This is Karen now. She's all you have left. Pass. You spoil her with all your attention. Oh, no. Karen, look out there just as far as you can see. It all belongs to Mr. Gibson and your daddy. And one of these days, half of it's going to belong to you. The land and all the cattle on it. An empire of grass. Daddy, what's a fire mean? A fire? <laughs> well, honey, I guess it's what a man builds for the one he loves the most. Bunch located back in the hills. Grab your horse and let's get going. Be careful, Charles. Building an empire can be dangerous. Like Alderson has the same idea we got. Them mavericks belong to anybody that can take them. Oh. 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 I ain't gonna let Alderson get away with it every time. Come on. You keep the cattle moving, wouldn't you? I'll stop them. Oh. 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 your friends to the party. You'd better dress. Do I have to? The white lace, it's laid out on your bed. Honey, now. She is nine now, Charles, and wild as the horses she rides. Yes, and she sure can ride them, too. And what else can she do? Why, well, Maria, she can... Well, she, uh... She is like a boy. The last few years, she lost all interest in the things a girl should have. Yes, but there are no schools out here and very few other girls. For a long time, I wanted to go home. I'm getting old, child. To Austria? Wait a minute, Maria. You're not thinking of taking Karen with you. Why not? There she could receive her education. You haven't been separated from her since the day you first saw her in my arms. I know it is not easy to let her go, but before long she will be back, and always you'll be glad you did it. Goodbye, honey. Now you be a good girl.
lies like that are pretty difficult, aren't they? Well, they don't come easy when you've been as close as we have. She'll be gone long. Yes, years. Quite a few of them. Bye. Goodbye. Howdy, Mr. Alderson. Hello, Steve. Let me have a drink of that stuff Wendy curls his whiskers on. Yes, sir. Nothing like it for frozen elbows, Wendy says. Guess we'll be seeing more of you now that things are perking up. Hey, Mr. Alderson? Why, something about to happen, Steve. Didn't you know? Why, sure. The old Great Northern's decking herself out. Gonna have a new lady manager. Old man Roberts is leaving. Oh, is that so? Yeah, her name's uh, Lila Regan. Something for you, ma'am? Yes. Where will I find Mr. Roberts? I think he's out back. I'll get him for you. Who'll I say wants him? Miss Regan. Lila Regan. Miss Regan. Hey, you're the new gal. Well, and pretty as a picture, too. Did you hear that, Mr. Allison? She's a new gal. <laughs> well, as he says, I'm the new gal. <laughs> Growed up to be a fine-looking gal, didn't she? Yes. Who done the picture? Some fellow from Chicago painted it from a photograph Karen sent me from Vienna. You know, Wendy? She looks so much like her mother that sometimes I... She'll be great to see her again, won't it? Yeah. Only what kind of a country is she coming back to? All cluttered up. I'm warning you, and you can mark my words, Allison. One of these fine days, you're going to open that door, look out, and you're going to see somebody. And then before you know it, just as far as you can look, there won't be nothing but people. Oh, Wendy. Huh? You feel like coming with me to meet Karen? Not me. I ain't going to go hightailing around no place where there's people. Because where you find people, you find politicians. And if there's one thing that ain't safe, it's a politician. <laughs> All right, Wendy. See you later. Yeah. By golly, here they come, George. Hey, Smokey's really driving, and we better get over. He'll run over us. He always does that before he hits town. There she is, George. Again! Get up! see you, Charles. Hello, Maria. Maria, you brought me back a beautiful young lady. I brought you a princess. What did you want? Another one like me? Fancy lady all of the way. Thanks. 
said was it, Richard? Blonde, blue eyes, beautiful, just as your father said. Tall, dark, and ha just like my father said. You see, he described you in his letters. Oh, Glenn, this is Maria Schumann. Glenn is our foreman. How do you do? It doesn't look like you two need an introduction. But Glenn, this is my daughter, Karen. Hello. Hello. Shall we go? Right. Gun shooting is the same, but there seems to be more bystanders. What brought all these people here, Charles? Well, Maria, they think they're homesteaders, but they'll find out they've come a long way for nothing. The boys around here seem to handle themselves pretty well, don't they? Who are those fellows? You must have come from another country, partner. That's Alderson of the KC and his foreman. Oh, so that's Alderson. Oh, Steve, I want to take along a half a dozen bottles of that stock we reserve for special occasions. Right, boss. Going to the party, I suppose, Will, along with everyone else? I wouldn't miss it. Anytime Alderson throws a party, he throws one. Now, this fellow Alderson, quite the say-so around here, isn't he? If you don't mind speaking to a stranger. How come you weren't there to meet her with Alderson? Mm, well, it was sort of a family reunion, and I... Do you I... mind if I try again? You wouldn't be Lila Regan, would you? Who are you? The name is Lassiter from Kansas City. They locate here, if there's room for one more. There's not much room for the button-in type, mister. We like folks who keep their noses out of other people's business. They usually do that. Told me in Cheyenne I'd be pretty smart when I got here if I didn't get messed up with a gent by the name of Charles Alderson or his girlfriend. But you can see I'm not very smart. Besides being the big noise around here, this fellow Alderson seems to know his apples, doesn't he? In case you don't know it, mister, you're doing your best to bang your snoot up against the butt end of my six gun. Now, just a second, gentlemen. This is a great northern hotel and there's no sawdust on the floor. We take those bottles from Steve Will, and if you're driving alone, I'll go with you. Did you want to see me about something in particular? Is there a man on the loose in Wyoming who wouldn't like to see you about something in particular? If I should pick some flowers by the roadside, can I bring them up some night? Why don't you take that up with Mr. Alderson? Then you won't have to pick the flowers. Your friends will pick them for you. Have you seen Lila? No, and I don't want to see her. Ever since you made her a present of the Great Northern, she does more managing than Maria does. One boss time around here is enough. Hold it, boys. Folks, I want you to welcome the little lady that just come back to Wyoming. Karen, you look lovely. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Lila. Hello, Charles. Thank you, Will, for bringing her to the party. Who, me? Oh, I just brought some bottles, and she happened to be with them. <laughs> Lila, this is my daughter, Karen. Remember? Hello, Karen. Hello, Lila. And Maria? Maria? How are you, Glenn? Hello, Lila. Will, you remember Karen? Oh, how are you? She was only about three the first time I met you. Uh-huh. Hello, Glenn. Oh, well, how about the first dance? Oh, no, Glenn. I get the first dance with Karen. Looks like you're stuck with me. Yeah. Come on. Father, the house is lovely. For a lovely girl. You know, Karen, I just can't believe it. Believe what? Well, you, you look so much like your mother. Oh, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. By the way, Karen, that's quite a dress you're wearing. You know, the folks in Medicine Bowl have never seen a Paris gown before. I hope no one thinks I'm trying to show off, but it's all I have. Don't you worry, they won't think that. Even though it were a gingham gown, it would still look like something from Paris on you. <laughs> is this better than riding herd, or not? I'll say she is. She's 
pretty too, isn't she? Time to change partners, folks. One thing about working on a ranch, the boss always has a beautiful daughter. And I'm glad she's home. You are? And then what? Well, then, uh, I live, um, I mean, we. No, they, they live happily ever after. Don't they? Who does? Um, why, I do. No, they do. Everybody does, don't they? Well, you folks get tired of dancing? Yeah, it's a little out of my line, wasn't it? <laughs> you made something magnificent of the old ranch, Charles. It must have cost a fortune. I don't mind spending money, Maria, if it makes people happy. But with all these new people here, wouldn't it have been wiser to invest that money on land? But Wyoming's the state of the Union now. What has that to do with it? That makes it government property. They won't sell it, but they passes it out free and easy-like at the rate of not more than 160 acres to each pilgrim by a special privilege they call the Homestead Act. You can't raise many cattle on 160 acres. Uh, 160,000 acres would be more like it. However, our congressman has proposed an amendment which will set aside this country for grazing. And if the amendment does not go through? Then we'll find another way. We've spent most of our lives on this land, Maria. And we intend to keep it. And if a man is told that he can have a piece of land, he will take it and fight and die to keep it, if necessary. And that's what they'll do here, won't they? Oh, it's so lovely and cool. This must be the Alderson place. Looks like we've stumbled right into the lion's den. It's quite a party you're having here. That's right. I saw you in town this afternoon, didn't I? Yeah. This is the Alderson place. You're right again. My name is Lassiter. We're homesteaders. This is Joseph Lett, my brother Ed, and his wife, Queenie. This is Miss Alderson. I'd like you to meet my Uncle Edgar and my Aunt May and their beautiful daughter Susan. But they're in New Orleans. Incidentally, my name's Glenn Forrester. Good night. Oh, don't hurry. How do you do, Miss Alderson? I've heard of the Alderson Kingdom. You are the young princess. My respect. How flattering. A visit from Prince Charming in disguise. What did you want? I was wondering if we could find a place to camp around here. I think that can be arranged. However, I want you to know this is not homestead land. You mean it wasn't homestead land? They say it is now. I'm afraid you've been misinformed. But there's a flat just beyond the cottonwoods where the homesteaders have camped on their way through here. You're welcome to use it for tonight only. Thank you. You're very generous, Mr. Alderson. But then you ranchers can afford to be free-handed. After all, it didn't cost you anything to get your herds, and you raise them on government grass. Come on, Father. We're having a party. Oopie tally yo yo get along, my little doggy. It's your misfortune, and I'm on my own. Oopie tally yo get along, my little doggy. You know that will blame the nesters for anything that happens around here. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of other people to suspect they can't pin anything on us. We can run cattle out of here with a thousand. Only, how are you going to get the ranchers to let the nesters in? Well, if it were a posse that you were dealing with, the first thing you'd aim to pick off would be the sheriff. 
That's exactly what we're going to do here. Except this time, the man we're going to pick off is another kind of a leader, Alderson. This riding habit was all right in Europe, but it certainly isn't for this country, especially the hat. Well, you need to shade your eyes as an umbrella. I should have a hat like yours, shouldn't I? Mr. Forster needs his hat, Karen. Your father can send to Cheyenne for one like it. It'll only take two weeks. In the meantime, you can wait under a tree. But you need it. Nothing I like better than a sunstroke. Thank you, Mr. Forrester. It should be Glenn, shouldn't it? After all these years? Should it? How's that, Maria? Did I say something? Plenty of good water for this time of the year. Should last the grass out. I thought you were going to build a dam, so there'll always be plenty of water. I didn't think you'd remember things like that. Why not? Well, it's been quite a few years. Well, if I've changed, it's like Wyoming has changed. Grown up. But I remember a lot of things you've probably forgotten. Such as what? Well, we used to ride this maser together. Do you remember when you gave me my first horse? I raced you all the way up to the coulee. Remember? Sure, I remember. And I remember you won, too, didn't you? Uh-huh. And you let me, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Little calf is trying to get to the coulee on his own. I'll ride up and see if any more of them need help. Right. Wears me out thinking about all the work I should be doing. It does? Well, then let's talk about something else. All right. <clears throat> let's talk about you. Let's talk about your eyes. You know I can tell your fortune by your eyes? You can. Mm -hmm. Everything's right in your eyes. <sighs> I can tell your past, your present, and what's more important, I can tell your future. Let's see. Your past. When you were a little girl... Wait. I'll tell you my past. I was a lonely little girl, longing to come home. Shall we go on from there? I see. Uh, well, that leaves the uh, present. Well, now that you're grown up... I can tell you that, too. Now that I've grown up, I... I'm very happy. Well, that leaves the future. Let me see your eyes again. Mm -hmm. I see a tall, eligible bachelor in your eyes. How interesting. Tell me something about him. You know, his past, present, and future. He worked for your father for eight years. The first year, that was the year of the big blizzard. Oh, yes. There was some kind of a snowstorm, wasn't there? Snowstorm? Why, your father and I almost froze to death trying to save the cattle. And then? Well, then the next year, that was the Battle of Little Branch Creek. That's right. You were around when he had that little skirmish. Skirmish? Why, a hundred Cheyennes and 35 ranchers were killed. You call that a skirmish? Come on, sit down. Now, let me look into your eyes. Why don't you tell me how you've longed for your law practice? And why didn't you tell me you were disbarred? All right. I was disbarred because I threw a crooked jury out of a courtroom. But I overlooked the fact that the judge was a crook, too. But let me tell you. You're telling me your fortune, remember? What about your future? Well, the bachelor married the young lady. That's his past, his present, and his future. Why, you little... Sound 
sounded like rifle fire. You're a little mite careless with your artillery, ain't you, mister? You were cutting that wire, weren't you? Them's Elderson's cows, and they're thirsty. What's more, we've been using that water hole for 20 years. In this country, a good water hole's the most valuable thing there is. Well, you better find another one. What's going on here? Rifle fire, I heard, wasn't it? I was cutting a wire and... Joseph left there, fired on the quarter section around that water hole at the land office in Cheyenne. If you had a prior claim, it wasn't recorded. Claim? This is homestead land. That fence is coming down. No, it ain't. Lassiter there's got the smooth talk. Me, I just got this gun. But it says that fence is going to stay. Maybe you better move along, Alderson, before Sir Blatt's trigger finger gets a sudden itch in it. I'll take my chances. in here, would we? You're playing a losing game, Lassiter. This is my country. I've got a hundred friends and no enemies. You can't win. Well, I guess we won't have any more trouble with them. Only I just come from town, and I heard our amendment was defeated in Congress. Have your men rip that wire down, Glenn. To operate their farms, these nesters will need livestock, which they'll try to buy from us. And I doubt very much that we'll have any for sale. Whereupon, yearlings and mavericks will begin to disappear from our herds. And then, gentlemen, We've got them. We'll have them, we'll have them dead to rights. And we'll treat them just like any other cattle rustlers. And we won't need the state to tell us how to do that. Right. <laughs> What's the matter, son? You got stomach ache? Hello, Lila. You like the plan? No. Well, what's the matter with it? it? Means trouble, doesn't it? What if it does? Watch it, will you? Well, after all, I do have an interest in the party of the first part, and I'd like to protect that interest. Well, Charles, can't you see you're bucking the tide and you can't win? I'd rather not discuss it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to talk to Jennings. But you once said you thought I had more sense than most women. Don't you want me to use it? Some other time. Let's have the best, Steve. It'll be at Mr. Lassiter's expense. Huh? Uh, yeah, okay, boss. I picked the flowers, but I forgot to bring them. How about a bottle of wine instead? Good wine has a bouquet, they tell me. Uh, speaking of manpower, Count and our foreman and the rest of the hands, I think we ought to be able to get together. Sure, your hotel makes money, but you have to work for it. I'm a man who believes a woman should have it without working for it. You know, I love the sound of that. Would you say it again? Louder. How are you, Alderson? Get on your way. I just dropped in to see Miss Regan. It might not be the polite thing to just hurry you off. You've seen her. Now you can leave. So these are some of your friends you were telling me about. Sort of puts me on the short end, doesn't it? I'll drop in again, Miss Regan. There's nothing for you to get excited about, Charles. I scarcely know the man. You don't need to explain. It's your privilege to put an end to anything you're tired of. But there's just one thing I want you to remember. If I'm set to lose, it's not going to be to some soap peddler like Lassiter. But, boss, this is a big country. 
We could bring up another amendment at the next session of Congress and have them put aside a part of the range for grazing. No, Glenn. If we let the nesters in, they'll either have to farm, which won't work, or rustle. But when laws are made, provisions are also made to enforce them. Who cares about that? Did they consult us when they made their laws? What's the matter with you, Glenn? You've never been afraid of a fight. I'm glad to get in there with you any time I think you're right. What do you call right? Don't you think we ranchers are entitled to what we've got? What I think or don't think has nothing to do with it. What I'm trying to tell you is you can't fight the law. Oh, Glenn, it's warm in here. Let's go outside. You should be more careful with your hats. Can I help it if some dead blame nester takes a shot at me? Still, you should be more careful. Why get so upset, Glenn? Oh, honey, your father has a head as hot as a rock, and he's wrong. I know he's wrong. But you have no personal interest in the outcome, so why get into the argument? But I do have a personal interest. Your father, besides being my boss, is my best friend. I don't want to see him kick himself into a lot of trouble. Don't you understand, honey? He's not fighting a handful of nesters, but an entire nation whose laws are made by the people. He can't fight the whole United States. No, of course not. But you know what must happen if you continue to side against father. Yes. There'll be a showdown. Conscience bothers you, there's an axe in the woodshed. Yeah? Thanks. You're Mr. Alderson, ain't you? That's right. Yeah, I was wondering, how do you figure to keep your cows from piling up in Juniper Pass in this storm? Piling up? There was a bunch of them heading right for the wire when I passed. The wire? Sure. That's your old wire strung across the mouth of the pass, ain't it? was right. It's those nesters again. I'll start cutting the wire down. I'll run up the cattle and set them through. Right. There they are. Come on. Hurry up, Glenn. Get them started before the rest of them freeze to death. Get away from there. Don't you know you're trespassing, destroying property? This your fence line? Ed Lester here, homestead of this quarter section. I'm his foreman. Foreman of nothing. This is Juniper Pass, a natural highway. This is a spike fence and it's coming down. You can't let cattle freeze to death. Wait a minute, boss. Let me handle this. If you drop that fence, Mr. Allison will pay for all the damage. Never mind, Glenn. But, boss, I said never mind. I'm not asking any favors of these troublemakers. Now then, get rid of that rifle. Throw it away. Get him, Ed. He's dead. We better get him out of the way. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Cold out there. I believe I'll have some coffee. How about you, Glenn? This foolish girl was going to ride after you. Is everything all right? I'm afraid not. I knew we wouldn't have any trouble getting back. Those early blizzards always blow themselves out before morning. Isn't that right, Glenn? I suppose so, yes. We hold up under Signal Butte, Karen. Before we had time to roll a cigarette, the wind had stopped and we started home. Oh, you did? You know, Glenn, I believe we're due for a south wind that'll blow those drifts off like they've never been there. Don't you? Yeah. Father, 
There have been words between you and Glenn, and you sit there and talk of snowdrifts. Words don't mean a thing, Karen. Sometimes Glenn takes his law a little too seriously, that's all. If a man ever needed a lawyer, last night you were that man. Yes, I know. As soon as I get some sleep and a big feed, I'll ride into town and tell the sheriff all about it. Tell the sheriff what? You've got to know, Karen, so I might as well tell you. My cattle were freezing and a nester took a shot at me. Well, I... I had to shoot back in my own defense. And so you did. And now the nester is dead, of course. A man just rolled in. He's coming toward the house. It's Sheriff Niles, Jones. I set the police for him. Hello, Sheriff. Come in. Good evening, Charles. Glad you came over. Saved me a trip into town. You're just in time for supper. Good. Got a warrant for you, Charles. Thought you'd like to know about it. Murder, huh? Ah, better that way. Less chance of a verdict. How long will it take? Oh, one day, maybe less. Uh, how's the 14th? Fine. I'll be there. We'll set it up in my office. All right. You know everyone here. Yes, good evening. Sit yeah. right over here. Thanks. How are you, Sheriff? Guess you'll be representing the defense, huh, Forrester? No, this will be one for Wendy. Yes, Sheriff, I'm afraid Glenn don't quite savvy the unwritten. Olison and his friends have got the idea this trial is going to be a routine affair. But I've got a little surprise for them. What if it doesn't work? That's up to you. I'm not forgetting it with my brother. Thomas Jefferson Gibson, appearing as counsel for the accused. Client enters a plea of not guilty by reason of self-defense. Now I reckon, Judge, you'll find him ready and willing to come clean with the facts. I swear, Charles Alderson. Raise your right hand. No matter of Ed Lassiter. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. John Lassiter, appearing in my own interest as brother of Ed Lassiter, deceased, and of Queenie Lassiter. You a member of the bar of Wyoming, Mr. Lassiter? I am learned in the law, and since there's no member of the bar available and I'm defending the memory of my brother, I'm entitled to serve. I guess you're right. What you got on your mind? Justice. The Constitution of the United States guarantees that every man, be he poor or rich, receive equitable and fair treatment before the court. Sure enough. Just what I've always said myself. But what's it got to do with the matter before the bench? That man, Charles Alderson, is rich. Well, that getting to be a crime? The crime will be if he's allowed to go scot-free for a killing. Where's your county attorney? Where are your witnesses? I demand that witnesses be summoned, that the interests of the deceased be served, and that a jury be formed to sift this matter. Mr. Lassiter, I am a tolerant man, and I try to be a fair justice. Therefore, I am not going to find you in contempt of court, yet. Mr. Gibson, as counsel for the accused, what you got to say? Why, Your Honor, I feel that like you do. If this feller's got any complaint about the way justice is upheld in the fair and beautiful state of Wyoming, I don't guess we ought to hog to him because of his downright ignorance of what's right and proper. Sounds fair, unbiased, and without prejudice. Therefore, I waive examination, proving his next of kin to the extinct, and take his word for it. Let's get on with the case. Charles Allison's been sworn. Now then, Mr. Allison, you just tell us what happened, how it came about, and all that. Your Honor, I object. What's wrong with you now? I demand that a jury be sworn. Well, that's up to the accused and his counsel. Hi, Charles. Howdy, Jennings. Howdy, boys. Hi, Charles. Well, I'm in favor of it. The man's entitled to a jury. I say, let's have one. I believe you're right, Mr. Gibson. Sounds fair, unbiased, and without prejudice. What's prosecution got to say? Look from here, Your Honor, as if maybe the prosecution don't want no jury after all. Go ahead, Mr. Ellison. Well, sir, I was informed by a grubline rider who'd stopped by my ranch to get in out of the storm that a part of my cattle were stalled up on wire in Juniper Pass, right in the path of the buzzard. So I took my foreman along, and we started to cut the wire. Just a minute. How about them cattle? What condition was they in when you come out of them? Some of them were dead already. I started knocking wire down pretty fast before the rest of them froze. And while that was going on, Ed Lassiter and Joseph Lett came by. While I was disarming him, Lassiter took a shot at me. There you have it, Jed. Defense rest. Open and shut case. I've got the report from the deputy sent out there. He saw the dead cattle at Juniper Pass after the storm. 
The accused cooperated with the law readily, etc. I find the accused Charles Alderson not... One moment, Your Honor. I wish to call a witness. Who might it be? Nyla Regan. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Be seated. Isn't it true that on the night of the shooting, Charles Alderson was at the Great Northern? Yes, he was there. And isn't it also true that he was drinking with Judge Sheridan here and that they were both... Don't answer that! I object! Your witness. No questions. Thank you. Now, Your Honor, I call on Glenn Forrester. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Be seated. Mr. Forrester, you were present when Charles Alderson and Ed Lassiter had the quarrel which led to the death of Ed Lassiter. I can't answer that. No? No dispute has been established. By the rules of evidence... This thing is getting out of hand. One lawyer examining another lawyer in front of a third lawyer while a fourth lawyer... You know there was a quarrel because there's a man dead, and you heard Charles Alderson say he killed him. I was there, Judge. Mr. Forrester, you are a student of law. I am. In your opinion, was Charles Alderson aware that he was committing a trespass? Just a minute. I object. Objection sustained. Very well. I will rephrase the question. Was Alderson warned that he was trespassing? I'm asking you a question, Mr. Forrester, and the court's waiting for your answer. Was Alderson warned that he was trespassing another man's property? Yes. But on account of the severity of the blizzard, I'm not sure that he heard the warning. Silence. Silence. No end of justice is being served by this hearing. And unless someone can now come before this court and show that the deceased was unarmed or that he failed to fire on the defendant, I declare Charles Alderson not guilty because he fired in self-defense. I take exception. I can't prove it, but on appeal. Hold on there. This is a trial for murder. How many times do you think you can go around jeopardizing a man's life? Only once in this court. Has the prosecution got any more evidence? If I had, what could I do with it? The defense counsel seems to be running this court. That's contempt! If it's a crime to show contempt for this court, then I'm a criminal. But at least today in this town and in this court, one voice has been raised against Wyoming justice. In the name of the poor, the striving against the rich, the entrenched. That's all. Court dismissed. Sorry, Alderson. That's all right. I should know better than to bump into a murderer, shouldn't I? Especially when the court's just handed him a hunting license. I guess you didn't get enough satisfaction in court, Mr. Lassiter. Look out, Charles! <laughs> Well, Glenn, I, I guess a law book has got some use after all. Thanks. You're welcome, boss. You know, Glenn, I, I thought for a moment that you... That I'd mess things up a bit. You'd have hated me if I had, wouldn't you? It'll give you some idea of how he feels. Had it been his own life in the balance, he would have told the truth. Charles, for a few minutes there, I was really worried. About me or Lassiter? There's nothing between me and Lassiter, except maybe in your imagination. We've come too far together, Charles, to start imagining things about each other. Yes, I, I guess we have, haven't we? Mm -hmm. We've got a lot farther to go, too. You can stay in one piece. You know, if this fight keeps on, I may have you another way. If I have you at all. What gives you that idea? This business? Well, a thing like this could happen to anyone anytime. It was an accident. But Charles, if accidents can happen to the other side, they can also happen to you. For instance, if, if Glenn hadn't thrown that book. That's right. Look the location over. And if you like it, come back and we'll get it registered. Thanks, Mr. Lassiter. I'll look it right over. Joe! Ha <laughs> ha! 
Well, what happened to you? Thought you'd be back last week. Yeah, this setup took some fixing. You can't run cattle off without getting rid of them. Hey, let's close up for the day and I'll make some coffee, huh? Good. <laughs> what about the men? Got them. They're up in the big basin country with enough food to last them for a month. After you run the cattle off, we can hide them up there. And any of these ranchers start nosing around, they'll get it right between the eyes. Tough crowd, eh? <laughs> Made me feel like a preacher. <laughs> Who's the head man? A fellow by the name of Jackson. The split's 50-50. We spot them and arrange for the sale. They do the rustling and take them to the buyer. Good system. Glad you're back. Alderson's roundup crew's working that end of the range. <laughs> There's never been any big-scale rustling around here, and they won't be expecting us. Coffee coming up. <laughs> And put it on my pony and lead him from the stall. Then tie me to his back and head us in the west. And we'll ride drinking the very best. There they are, Jackson. It's up to you. Off your horse and give me your gun. Right hand. Toss it. Just Christian. Come on. I saw him fall back there. Thought he was dead. Now he's only creased in the neck. I'm going back to the ranch to get some horses. You men stay here. going any further. The cattle they stole from us will be scattered all over this big basin. It'll take us a month to gather them. Yeah, while we was doing it, they'd pick us off like setting ducks. said, Shirley, <laughs> about, about trouble and, and people.
myself in the whole KC spread. Don't let them take it away from me. That's your nesters for you. I'll show them. Very nice service, Mr. Winters. Thank you. Nice little talk, Reverend. Won't you come in? No, thank you, Mr. Alderson. I'll be going along. All right. Thank you for everything. I'm glad that you put Wendy on his old ranch. I kind of think that this is where you'd like to be. Goodbye. As long as we're all here, I guess this would be a good time to decide what we're going to do about the nesters. Well, first we've got to face it. Driving them out ain't going to be no easy job. And what's more, it's going to call for gunplay. We own guns and know how to use them. But there's not enough of us. We need help. And I think I know where we can get it. Gentlemen, you've heard of Ben Jackson, haven't you? The outlaw? Yes. I saw him at North Fork when I was over there a couple of weeks ago, and he had a dozen of his men with him. I understand he can get together 50 or 60 more. Now, if you ask me, these nesters have proved their desperate characters. And it's men like Ben Jackson and his gang that we need to help us get rid of them. Sounds like maybe Timmons has an idea there. I'm for it myself. If I can put in a word here, gentlemen, of course you understand that Ben Jackson and his men are a gang of cattle rustling cutthroats. So we'll set thieves to catch thieves. But what rustling's been done, boss, you can't definitely prove the nesters did. And you can't definitely prove they didn't do it. But you're convicting them without a trial. The nesters I know are a simple bunch of farmers without the brains of experience to wrestle cattle. You can't turn a bloodthirsty mob of professional gunfighters on them. And why can't we? Because when the shooting's over, you'll be riding with Ben Jackson's outlaws or sitting it out the federal pen. Wyoming is now a state of the Union. It has a governor and a militia. With the United States Army to back them up. And in back of that, the people. The people who decided after having given half our lives to the development of a country, that we should cut it up with a bunch of farmers who were loafing around during the murderous years we were fighting it out with the land they're now trying to take away from us. Well, you'd better take this message back to your people, Forrester. Now, wait a minute, Charles, before you start lining me up with any particular side. Let's look at the facts. We've looked at the facts and we've heard your story. And we've seen you look and talk like a frightened man, Forrester, which means that you don't belong with us. Because of the state or the army or the people expect to take anything from us, they've got to get it exactly like we got it, by using force. And with that kind of a fight coming up, Forrester, I expect you'd better backtrack it out of here. Coming from anybody else, I wouldn't walk away from that one. But you're fixing to do yourself enough harm without me taking a punch at you. Karen! Charles! Let her go. Why should I? Don't you see that your opinion of Glenn Forrester may not be the same as hers? Also, she has her own life to live as she pleases. The same applies to me. And if you don't like the way I manage my own affairs, you know what you can do. You don't mean that. No? What do you think I mean? That was it, wasn't it, Glenn? What? The shoulder. Yep. And now it's up to me, isn't it? I mean to choose between you. If this thing was switched around, it was up to me to make the choice. And I loved you so much that my insides warped at the thought of giving you up. I still remember that everything my father did was done for me. Until he let me down, I'd stick right alongside of him. So long, honey. Now, don't cry, honey. That's what happens when a young man tries to take too much on his own shoulders. But he's right. Don't you see? He's right. Look, Alderson. Do you think it'd be all right for us to go ahead and do business with Jackson? Yeah, sure. What else can we do? Get word to him to meet me here. All right.
my hearing bad, or did you forget to knock? That's only for folks that don't know each other, isn't it? What do you want? I like you. Wanted to see you. Just dropped in to say hello. Have a drink. No. No, thanks. And if you don't mind, I have things to do. Oh, but they can wait a few minutes, can't they? I guess Alderson gave his whiskered friend a great send-off, didn't he? Better one than he plans to give you. He's planning to give me a farewell party? They're hiring Jackson and his gunmen to run you and every other nester right out of the country. Jackson? <laughs> oh, I know you're clever, Lassiter. But just how would you go about removing an obstacle as big as Alderson? Before we go into that, when you're back on your own, would you say things might look up for, say, me, for instance? Might be something to think about. But you haven't told me yet. Just how do you plan on getting rid of Alderson? What would you guess the details would be? Well, you're not running away from me, are you? There's nothing to be afraid of. Why should I be afraid of you? You shouldn't. Not with what you've got. I'd give plenty to have it working for me. What do you mean? Lucky man, Alderson. There isn't much you wouldn't do for him, is there? Right now, if you thought it would save his cheap neck, you might go as far as to sell out for him, wouldn't you? But you're wasting an awful lot of good stuff on a loser, baby. Let me go. Turn around, Lassiter, and take a look at a loser. I don't carry a gun, Alderson. What you plan to do, what I may think about it doesn't matter a lot, does it? Being a woman, I'll, I'll just have to stand around and wait and hope, won't I? I'm here with you, Grandma. And who are you, may I ask? Why, Jackson, Ben Jackson. Never heard of you, Mr. Jackson, but I'll tell him you're here. 
Thank you, Maria. I'll take care of it. Oh, Maria, who are those men? Ben Jackson and some of his men. So the trouble has started. Yes, it started. You know, those nesters might steal if they needed some meat, a few mavericks perhaps, but that was an organized raid. They are going to pay for it, whether they did it or not. Can't anything be done? I heard one of the boys say that Glenn organized a big meeting of the nesters at Morrison's tonight. Does father know that? Yes, he was surprised, but I don't know why. It was inevitable. Then he became very angry and said he'd teach him a lesson. If Glenn would only keep out of it. But he is not the kind that just stands and looks on. I'm afraid you're right. And Jackson's men are gunfighters that shoot from ambush. Maria, please help me dress. Mistake, Charles. Maybe when you started, it was your idea to build an empire for Karen. But now it become a struggle for power, and you don't care how you win it. After it's all over, you may find that you won a fight, but lost something more important to you. What? Karen. If Glenn is killed in this fight, She'll hate you as long as she lives. Ah, Miss Olison, drop in to have a look around? No. I came to see Glenn Forrester. Not to pick up information for your father? I'll answer for Miss Olison, Lassiter. Who'll answer for you? You're not fooling anybody around here by your sudden show of interest in these nesters, Forrester. And who do you suppose is fooled by your interest in them? We've had enough of you around here. Hold it, Lassiter. Forrester called this meeting. The plan he's laid down sounds like a pretty good one. That's right. He says we could win in court. I didn't come to Wyoming to be killed. I came here to farm and to raise my family. So did I. Thank you, men. We'll do all right. Come on, Karen. Now, what are you doing here? What's wrong? Everything was wrong. And I came here with all sorts of ideas and plans to persuade you not to get into the fight. But now, what that man said, it's true, isn't it? You mean my talking them into holding off and bringing that trouble to the government? That's the same argument I used on your father. Only the nesters believed me. And there'd be no more fighting and no one would be killed and... Well, the boss always is a handsome foreman, and he always comes home. Please. Then what? Why, then, everybody lives happily ever after, don't they? I promise you. Let's go home together now. I'd like to, honey. But I'd better hang around here. Something might go wrong. And then again, I don't know if I can go home until the boss sends for me. The boss will send for you. I know that. Because from now on, I'm going to be the boss. I pass. Did you see Alderson? Yeah, everything's set. I get 500 cash for every Nestor family I push out of the country. What about us? What about that rustling alibi? You should have thought of that before. Cards. Give me three. I did, but Forrester persuaded the Nestors to leave without a fight. Go to the law afterwards. Well, how'd you figure before that happened? It's going to be a fight. There'd be a lot of killing. And afterwards, the ranchers would find themselves in a tangle with the law. Their cattle would be easy picking for anybody who wanted to take them. Looks like we're going to have to go out and start a fight. That's right.
If you're looking for Morrison, he and Lassiter rode off with a bunch of the homesteaders about a half an hour ago. What? You know the Jackson gang is heading up into the valley, don't you? That's why I'm here, but... They're only trying to head them off, that's all. Lassiter and Sublet and all of his nester men are gathering in Cedar Valley. If we get there soon enough, we can bottle them up. And finish them off, huh? All right, we've got guns enough. He finally showed up and he's on his way. He should be there now. Right. There he is. Where's Lassiter? He and Joe Sublet went to scout out the Jackson gang. They'll be back as soon as they get them located. Oh, they won't? Can't you see they've run out on you? Why didn't you do as we agreed? Because Lassiter said Jackson was planning to shoot, whether we resist or not. Tex Lassiter's lying. I bet by shirt he and Jackson are working together. They're coming about a half a mile down the valley. Boys, they've hemmed us in. We can make the small base and we can hold them off. forever. But they can be cut down like jackrabbits if they try to get out. You and your men cover the mouth of the pass. We'll circle around and get at them from above. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Looks like they expect us to break out of here. Sure, because a big bunch of shower down on us from up there. Karen, you shouldn't have come here. I had to, Father. There is something between us that has to be settled. What? Oh, having to do with Glenn, I suppose. I'm very grateful for all you have done for me. But he comes first. Yes, of course he does. Please try to understand that when you send men like Jackson against him, you're sending them against me, too. Well, Karen, I... I hadn't thought of it just like that. But that's how it is. Goodbye. Karen! She's gone, Charles. And she's not coming back. I told you this would happen. I warned you. But you were too proud. Too sure of yourself. Because you've made yourself the judge and the jury, Glenn may be killed. And Lord knows what will happen to Karen. I doubt if you can stop it. You probably can't. But if there is anything you can do, you better do it. go through with us. Why can't we? Because we're not sure. And we'd better know we're right before we start killing people. We've got to give those nesters a chance to get out of that hole before Jackson can slaughter them from above. Shh. 
String your men along the rim and then let them have it. Like fish in a barrel. Space out along the rim and wait for the signal to fire. Maybe you aren't satisfied, but I am. I said we're not going through with this. Drop your guns. Now then, get rid of those rifles. Back away from those rocks. Come on, boys. Get your horse. We can get out of here. Start firing! Start firing! A few more things I have to do, so you better go back to the boss. All right, men. That's about it. Well, wait a minute. What's going to happen now? We'll talk about that when I get back. Right now, there's something I have to settle with Lassiter. With Jackson dead, they won't be giving us any more trouble. All right, boys. Let's go see what happened to Mr. Allison. It's too far for a sure shot. Why don't you ride to town? We'll see you later. get this settled right now, Lassiter. You've been using these nesters as a cover-up for your cattle rustling. You figured it out just about right, but it isn't going to do you much good. <laughs> Settle a lot of things for all of us. But you turn against the other rangers, and they'll never forgive you. We'll straighten that out. As soon as they find out Lassiter was responsible for all this rustling, then we've got to get the ranchers and nesters together. Am I sure I heard you right? I know that sounds strange coming from me. We've got to find some common meeting ground to settle our differences. I realize now that Wyoming is changing. 